All right, guys, here is the Canoe Gen 2, and I just wanted to quickly give you guys some afterthoughts on everything that we've done here today um, past the sound test. I know the sound test is probably one of the more important things, but I thought I'd lightly touch upon some things that I normally never do in these videos, like the building experience, uh, maybe my thoughts on the sound, typing experience, and just some general overall thoughts. So one of my biggest things about the building experience with this was the packaging was clearly labeled. That's one thing that I have not yet seen in keyboards. Um, so each one of those little baggies had like a little label on it saying what it was, which I thought was awesome. The building experience was really fun. I think this keyboard is a bit more complicated than most, having this very complex mid plate design, uh, as well as this whole harness system in which it kind of bolted down to the bottom of the frame. But it was really, really fun and I really enjoyed it. I think it was more of a challenge than most keyboards and it turned out really awesome. Let me quickly show you guys here. So this is the Casio version of the keyboard, uh, which turned out really, really nice and went really well with Bento. You can see the beautiful weight here on the bottom, which has some fingerprints already, clearly. And then we have the back. Uh, this was a very interesting spot. I didn't know why you had to screw in these pieces, but you did. Uh, the USB slot actually sits so flush, which is really nice to see as well. Uh, my only complaint with this entire keyboard in terms of the building process was these back screws thread in so easily that you think that you can keep going. In reality, they don't really want you to go past keeping this flush and straight. So you can go farther to make this more of like a V, which you want to avoid. So I wasn't too sure kind of the, uh, the reason for not adding some sort of stopping point to that. Other than that, pretty cool. I was under the impression too that these were adjustable feet in terms of sliding up and down. It does not appear that way, unfortunately, though, guys. I think you do have to open this up and then replace the feet where you want them. Still a cool feature to have nonetheless. Perhaps I built these wrong. Uh, other than that, super sharp, super sharp looking, um, super premium. The RGB on it was backlit, which is a really nice feature to have. Not a lot of keyboards have those these days. A lot of them are underglow. And it has this really, really well diffused top RGB, which is beautiful. So I guess some overall thoughts is, so Alex, what do you think about the sound? What do you personally think about it? I think it sounds great. I actually quite like clackier keyboards. Thocky keyboards are nice too. I, I like both sounds, but this one here does hold, I think a very nice sound signature. Uh, the only parts that were, I could say that, yeah, I'm not a huge, huge fan of, are this is the space bar really in the whole bottom row with the exception of the arrow cluster. Uh, it does sound a bit hollow on these guys over here. So not my, not my favorite, but in terms of everything else, great typing experience. I think the sound still sounds very, very nice. Uh, and it's a gorgeous looking board. I can't really dis discredit that at all. It is very beautiful and very premium. Um, so hats off to Percent Studios for that. Overall, I quite like it. And if I could buy one again, I definitely would. Thanks guys.